Hey there, I'm your host Liz Zoe, and this is part 6 of the Inventory System series. In the last episode, we covered some of the interaction within our UI, and in today's video, we'll continue with that and create some more flexibility. So, let's begin. Let's start by going into our content drawer and opening up the BPC underscore inventory. Now in here, we'll create a new function called transfer slot. Now for the slot, we want to know about our local index. So the index of this inventory, we want to know about the index of the source inventory. So let's call this the source index. And we want to know about the source um, inventory. And let's change this to BPC underscore inventory object reference. Now, like we had in the previous functions, we'll do a sequence. On one, we'll have our sound effects and update. And on one, we'll have the code. So I'll steal the update code from split stack. It's going to be fairly similar. I'll leave the item ID out. And when I paste it in, in order to get this row name, what I'll do is I'll get my array. We get a copy, and we're getting a copy of this local index. So get index. And we want to do a break. And we're interested in the item ID. And we can hide the quantity. So that's that. We also should update our source inventory because this only updates this local inventory. So to update our source inventory, let's first get it. Get source inventory. We can duplicate this code, paste it in, and plug that into the target. And that's us done with the update. Now, next, let's do get slots because we want to save this, get a copy of its own index, and simply promote to a local variable called local underscore source slot. And this will go into zero. And next, we want to check is our source slot equal to our local slot. So we can simply do that by comparing the two item IDs. And we have it saved there. We can drag out to a break. And the reason I do break is just so I don't have to look at the item quantity. if I'm not using it. It just looks a lot cleaner in my eyes. Oh, and we need the item ID. So let's do an equals equals. So if both of these are equal to each other, we want to add them, but if they're not equal to each other, we want to swap them around. So to swap them around, what I'll do is I'll get my create new stack and we want the source inventory to actually be creating this new stack. I'm going to overwrite the data in there with our current um, stuff in our local inventory. Split this, plug that in there, uh, even it out. And what I can do with the index is get my source index, so get source index, there we are, because this is a source inventory that's getting overridden with our local information. And then we'll do the same with our local in, uh, local slot. So we don't have it anywhere handy. Let's get our create new stack. And because there's no target, it means it's this one here, it says self. For the item ID, we'll keep it with this one a break item id goes in there and we can hide the unconnected pins for the item quantity what we'll do is um i actually need the item quantity this will go there and for the index we'll get our local index get index there we are so this will take care of our inventory slots when they're not equal so they're just they're are just going to switch around. Now, if they are equal, it will be a little bit more difficult. So to order to make that happen, we'll grab our source inventory with the source index. And the item ID will be a select. And the index value we'll get by adding our both our slots together. So I'll get my item slots like so. We want the quantity this time. And I'll also get 
my where is this? My source slot. And we want the we want the item ID as well. So what I'll do is I'll add them together. And I want to minus the max stack size. And the reason for this is let's say you have eight plus five. Well that makes 13, but we can't have 13 in one stack because the maximum stack is only 10. So this will minus uh, the 10, which is the max stack size, and we'll leave three. So let's get our max stack size, plug it in there, minus it, and then we'll clamp it with that. So now we can see, is this greater than zero? If it is, well, we'll do something about it. Let's take that a little, little backward. And for true, what I'll do is I'll get another copy of this and plug the item ID in there and we can hide the item quantity. Now false, if it's not, well then we'll just leave it blank. Nothing goes in there. And the item quantity will actually be the quantity from here. So we can reroute it or E or reroute and plug it in and then select everything Q to even it out and make it look pretty. Now the next one here will be our local so we can pretty much copy what we have plug it in here and do 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 do, do connect it like so now the quantity won't be the quantity from here it will be the added quantity so let's copy this part without the minus we want the clamp as well put the clamp in there and this value will go into item quantity. And that's us pretty much done with this function. So let me compile and save it. And next we want to implement this in our inventory slot. Because our inventory slot knows if we're clicking on it. So go to UI, go to your inventory slot. And we want to open up our on preview mouse button down. So if we're not right clicking, it's false. We want to check, are we clicking with our left mouse button? So left mouse, this goes in here. And perhaps this is true. Now is, if this is true, we are actually clicking with the left mouse button, but then we want to create something called a detect uh, drag if pressed and we want to do it with the left mouse button and the pointer key event will also come from this mouse event i wonder if i can do mouse event get yeah, mouse event oh i can actually do that pretty cool i didn't know about this okay so next what we'll do is we want to return this value as handle this will be the return value now, in order for detect drag uh, if pressed to work, we need to create something called a drag and drop operation. So we can actually implement this first on our functions. Go to override and look for on drag detected. Now here we go to our content drawer. Let's go to our inventory system folder. Right click and look for something called a drag drop operation select and i'll call this ddo underscore inventory slot now inside we want to add our variables such as the inventory component which will be our bpc inventory object reference and we want to get our index and that's pretty much it Make both of these instances editable and exposed on spawn. Just like so. Compile and save. Next, uh, back in our on drag detected function, what we'll do is when the drag is detected, it's also going to create a preview slot that we can see. So let's go back into our folder UI and create a new widget, which we can call wb underscore preview slot and let's open it up in here we are going to add a size box and we'll make this a size of 60 
just a little bit shy of our original size, which is 70. Now I'll make this desired on screen. And the next thing we want to do is add a border for the background. And this we can make a dark color similar to our inventory slot. And inside of this, we'll add a image to represent our icon. This will have a padding of two. And let's also give it a name, img underscore item image. And with that, let's go to the event graph. On pre-construct, we want to get or item ID. We want to get this item ID. And let's make it instance editable and exposed on spawn. From here, we'll do get row. And in the data table, we'll plug this in. And out row, let's do a break. And we're interested in the image. So let's get our item image and do set brush from texture. Now, log that in there, hide all the unnecessary pins, and row found goes in here. With that, let's compile and save. Next, let's go back into our inventory slot, and we can add this widget that we just created. So, create widget, and in the class, we'll do preview slot. And we can also put in our item ID just like so. And then I want to do a create drag drop operation. Now the payload is actually wrong. We want this to go into default drag visual. And we want to put in our own inventory slot, which is our drag and drop inventory slot operation. This can return as is. And if you refresh it, or even if you don't, you should get the index inventory component and we'll put them in there. Q to even it out and Q again. So that's us pretty much set up. Let's see if this is going to work. So let's compile and save. And if we hit play and collect maybe a mushroom or two and start dragging, we can drag, but yet we cannot drop. So let's see what happens when we drop. Let's go back and on functions do on drop. Inside here, we want to cast from the operation to DDO, which is the drag and drop operation we just created. From the inventory slot, we'll do get inventory component. And we want to make sure this is not equal to our own inventory because we don't want to be able to uh, drag and drop with our own inventory. Uh, let's get that in there. And let's also make sure get index. It's not the same index because we don't want to switch the same index. It doesn't really make sense. So let's do that. And this will be a or value. So or Boolean. So either or has to be true in order to happen. Let's do that. Uh, before we actually even do this, we want to call our own function. So let's get our index that in there quickly and let's get our inventory component and do transfer slot function this will go true and the index will get there the source index and the source inventory will come from here so i'll do a reroute node i'll do a second reroute node or eor and from here i want my index and i want my inventory component Whoop. Wrong one, copy paste, like so. And let's just connect them in there. And that looks good to me. And then we can pass this value as success. So let's compile, save, and give this a shot. Let's hit play, collect a few mushrooms, and see if I can drag and drop. I can, and we also get the sound effects. Let's see if this works if we have another item in the game. So I'll go find my inventory system, items, and let's get our base item into play. And let's make two. So I'm walking about, picking a few mushrooms and a few blocks. And I want to swap them around, which I can. So this is working pretty good for us. So this will be it for this video. 
In the next video, we'll be building some container stuff. And with all that said, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.